So apologies, I didn't have a very clear title to call this video, but what I wanted to talk about in this particular video is one case that's been somewhat in the UK news recently, from a few years ago, but some new evidence has come out about it recently. But um, the sort of sad thing is there's a lot of evidence of a cover-up with this. So basically a seven-year-old boy died in, I think it was 2017, from hydrogen cyanide gas that basically or allegedly had come from a uh, toxic waste dump that the government had put there near his house. So when there was flooding in the area, because you know in the UK lots of houses are built on floodplains because again it's cheaper, um, the cyanide essentially went into the house and killed the child. Now um, obviously that's horrible but part of the cover-up was that the government and the coroners were um, encouraged to say it was caused by carbon monoxide poisoning, you know what would come from a leaky boiler or a generator, not cyanide which kill people in very different ways and his dad was also crippled by um, the gas exposure so it wasn't going to be carbon monoxide because that either kills you or you're fine basically or you know ill for a bit but you don't sort of lose loss of muscle and limbs like you would with cyanide poisoning. But um, I'll put a link in, unfortunately I can only find a Daily Mail article on this, it was talked about on LBC in quite a lot of detail for about an hour, I think it was on Saturday or Sunday uh, last week, but the only thing I can find at the moment is the Daily Mail article, because again, mainstream media generally doesn't like covering things where the government's to blame for things. So anyway, um, but this isn't actually a new thing, there has been lots and lots and lots and lots of cases sadly across the western world, and probably everywhere else, where governments are awful at disposing of hazardous materials, you know, things you would get in a lot of trouble for if you just dump somewhere. But if the government decides to dump it irresponsibly, it's not their problem even when it kills and maims people or animals. So one of the big problems we've had since World War One and World War Two is the use of chemical weapons basically being buried. So as lots of nations outlawed chemical weapons or lots of them were coming to their end of their useful shelf life, they simply just decided to bury them in landfills, which is obviously not a good idea because, you know, the shells will eventually rust and leak and, you know, any contamination in the groundwater is extremely bad. Um, there was also a lot of ships that were sunk full of chemical munitions after World War I and World War II and when there was that big chlorine cloud at Beachy Head quite a few years ago, um, that was probably due to that as well, which I've talked about before on this channel. But one of the big examples, for example, is in Germany today. They have lots and lots of problems with nerve agents that have been buried um, in forests because basically Nazi Germany produced thousands of tons of deadly nerve agents such as sarin, soman and tabun and then after the war basically it was just buried to dispose of it. And what's happening now is obviously going 80 odd years on, the shells are leaking, uh, leaking into the soil meaning they're contaminating the surrounding area. So, funny enough, although I said CBRN in the title of this video, radiological and nuclear hazards are actually probably the least worrisome of all these things. Sure, they exist, because I mean, obviously, in lots of nuclear test sites, the, um, you know, soil isn't disposed of properly, it's essentially just buried under concrete that's going to last a lot less than the time of the half-life of the particular um, radionuclides made. Um, a good example of that is in the South Pacific, um, where America was doing a lot of their nuclear tests. But for the most part, it's chemical and biological weapons. And it seems to be that basically when nations decided that these were no longer okay things to have in stockpiles, they weren't going to dispose of them properly and spend money on it, they were just going to bury it. And of course, it's going to be the poorest people that get screwed over by this. And as well, you also get kind of just industrial neglect, you know, where companies can get away with just disposing of the stuff incorrectly, as in dumping it somewhere and then Again, it's the poorest people that are forced to live in areas near this stuff, so they're the ones who are going to suffer the long-term health effects, because obviously with a lot of this stuff, either does damage to you over the long-term, you know, affecting fertility or, um, you know, long-term disabilities and cancer, or it will just outright kill you if the levels are high enough. And um, sadly this isn't a new thing, but it's something that I think a lot of the media tries to pretend that doesn't really happen. But you can probably find a massive, massive list online of all the various... Um, sort of CBRN materials that governments have just disposed of or their contractors have just disposed of by literally dumping it somewhere. And it's, it's even the same thing of asbestos waste. A lot of that was just dumped in like regular waste dumps where it would come into contact with, you know, people's lungs, again by, you know, governments that were meant to know better, or they would pay a company to dispose of it for them and those companies would basically just dump it to make the most profit possible. 
So yeah, again, with a lot of these things, there's no way of you knowing this stuff is there unless you have the right detecting equipment, and for most people that's far too much money to justify it. You know, I don't think most people can afford Geiger counters and chemical testing equipment to find out what's in the soil near the houses. Near me, for example, there's a lot of old pesticides they used to test in one or two of the fields. Um, and again, I imagine if you live too close to that, that's probably not going to be good for you, because lots of old pesticides are pretty horrible things um, in terms of cancers and, you know, just essentially killing people or animals. So, um, yeah, the, the point of this video is I can totally believe that um, this child was essentially murdered by government neglect, um, because the symptoms of his death certainly didn't meet carbon monoxide poisoning, but are much more similar to that of cyanide or a nerve agent. And, um, you know, just the sad thing is, this isn't a new thing, it's been going on for decades. If there's industrial waste or chemical weapons, for example, Lots of governments all around the world just choose to basically bury it in a landfill as opposed to disposing of it properly, because disposing of it properly costs money, and that's not something they want to spend even when it's going to cost people's lives and health uh, for hundreds of years to come through this neglectful practice.